You're now listening to Self Inventory. I'm your host, Brandon Chastang, a.k.a. B. McFly. And yes, B. McFly stands for being motivated comes from loving yourself. You got to love yourself, man. When you love yourself, you're more motivated to do more. I have a special guest, man. This guy right here. I met this gentleman like almost three years ago. And um, I met him on social media and... You know, we just took off ever since, man. So he goes by the name of Father Barber. Let's give a warm welcome to Father Barber, man. What's going on? Hey, man. <laughs> this was history in the making, man. Um, you had this one video that was up on social media, on Facebook, just taking flight, man. And this was creative. It was you in a bathroom, you know, like you were in prison and... You told this story, man, you know what I mean? This is what happened in prison, and it's like, it was touching. You know, my brother, you know, he did like 10 years in prison, so, you mm -hmm. know, I shared, you know, I shared that. Mm -hmm. I, I, have, I have never been to that, you know, the stint of, you know, being incarcerated or anything like that. I just mm -hmm. felt it, man. I said, man, I gotta meet this brother, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And um, we just connected on social media. It's the power of social media when you're meeting, you know, individuals, like, you know, uh, Y'all can share, you know, a common space, man. It's just been love ever since then. You know, we've gone on three three years, you know, a friendship. And this is where it led, you know, to, uh, you know, podcast. You know, everybody's having conversations. Everybody's talking on platforms and that nature. And this is definitely going to be a great show. This is one that's going to be for the, the record. This one is going to be in the rafters, you know what I mean? You know, we retire in our jerseys. We retiring yeah. our jerseys. You know, well, you heard this. it from Fa. You heard it from Fa the Barber, man. We <laughs> we retiring our jerseys. So listen, can you tell the viewers and the listeners where are we at right now? What city we in, and what part of the city are we in right now? Uh, right now, we in in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. uh, this is section of South Philadelphia, in Philadelphia. Uh, we at my barber shop at Twentieth uh, and Snyder. Uh, I've been in this place uh, for twenty years. Last year, this be the twenty first year. This year and this place has always been uh, legendary mm. uh, for myself, as well as the community. You know, when I was 15 years old, I'm from South Philadelphia. Okay. So, you know, I would ride past this building, you know, uh, on my bike. Actually, but, you know, a book bag for the Clippers, you know wow. what I mean? As a young man, you know, uh, going to do a mobile cut, uh, cut somebody's hair. So, you know, I stopped. And I just said one th one day that, you know, I want this building one day. This is in 1995. You know, wishful thinking is for real. So it's all right to wish and think and ask God for an opportunity because it will happen. So, so how you, were you? How old were you when you were riding your bike past this building? Uh, 15 years old. 15 years old. 15 years old. Wow. So, uh, so this was in 1995. It was always like a barbershop here. A gentleman by the name of Ali ran it. You know the ten minute man. He cut hair for ten. He cut hair in ten minutes. Oh, so I was like, whoa. So I was like, you know, uh, I want this place, you know, to be epic. Uh, I want this place to be a pillar in the community, structure, foundation. You know, these words are, I'm really big on. Mm -hmm. So you know, I said, I I want this to be that place. So fast forward, you know, uh, five years later, in, in 2000, it's actually, you know, um, I got blessed. A new landlord took the building over. Uh, he was upstairs, you know, um, cleaning up, you know, getting ready for new tennis and stuff like that. And I asked him, hey, you know, is this place, you know, down here, is it for rent? And he said, yeah. So I was like, bet. So I was like, you know, um, can I give you my information? He's like, sure. You know, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, the potential people to take this place over. So I said, great. So, um, I mean, God is good, man. God is amazing. Uh, new landlord contacted me seven days later. He said, you know, come to meet me on my meet me at my lawyer's office on Broad Street wow. to come and sign the lease. Now I don't know this man from a can of paint. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh one thing he told me is said, you know, I'm gonna give you this place off of faith and I'm a, I'm gonna trust you. We're gonna build a relationship. Mm. He just said one thing, he said, just just don't sell no drugs out of here. So I said, Sir, you know, them days are over for me. I'm not interested in selling no drugs. Um, I just want to cut hair and I want to build a platform. Um, just like the Italians did for so many years in South Philadelphia, I want to pattern myself behind how the Italians did it in South Philadelphia. You know, it's amazing because a lot of people, they only see what they see right now. They don't understand the story behind where you at right now. 
You said 15, you rolled past this building and said one day you're going to be in here cutting hair. When did you start cutting hair? When did you, like, when was cutting hair for you, like, yo, something that was, like, your passion? Um, I started cutting hair, like, in 1990. Okay. You know, I was, you know, 12, 13 years old. Wow. Uh, that's around the time when a young man, you know, start to discover kind of, like, what he, even a young woman, what he or she wants to do in life. Correct. So, you know, it was one of the things I promised my mom, you know, she came and got me from the Youth Study Center. Mm-hmm. I got in trouble. I said, Mom, listen, you know, buy me a pair of clippers, Mom, and I'm going to take care of us. Wow. What I mean, us, us as a whole, you know, us as a community, you know, my family, you know what I mean? Just be, you know, a, a pillar in the community. And I promised her that. And, you know, I, I lost her in 01 uh, okay. to, to kidney failure. But, you know, definitely the, it's still there. You know what I mean? The passion, you know, the promise, you know, everything that I told my mother that I would do is still here. And, and we going on... 20 years now. So did you find your passion, well, in the youth study center as well? Or was it before you went to... I mean, part of it, it was because I'm in the youth study center, you know, uh, overnight. You know, I didn't spend no time Mm -hmm. in there. Um, For those who don't know what youth study center is, real quick, that is a place, is it's a it's a it's a detention center for children. For juveniles. For juveniles with, with, you know, some with behavior issues, mainly with behavior issues. Right. So, you know, I'm in there for one night and I'm like, dad, like, you know, this is, you know, what jail would be like, you know, mm-hmm. someone telling you when to get up, uh, when to go to sleep, uh, when to eat, you know, when to do activities and stuff. It's a controlled environment. So it's like, you know, I say, why let somebody control me mm-hmm. and I can control the problem? Mm. I can control, this is before the people were using the word narrative, you know, I can control the problem. Problem, I can control, I can do whatever I want. You know, I can, you know, help my community, I can build, you know what I mean? I can show people and, you know, that's what I set out to do, to do that. Wow, man. So it's like, even through troubling times, you still found something to target your energy. Yes, I mean, I mean, Barbara did it, man. You know what I mean? And um, like I said, wishful thinking. Mm-hmm. Same thing. You know, I got to had an opportunity um, to work for the Roots, the band. You know, Grammy Award winning band in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I serviced them for twenty years. Same thing. You know, with Black Thought. You know, he blessed me. You know, he showed me the world. He opened the door, and you know, I was able to do amazing things with Barbara. Yeah, you said the Roots, right? And before we get into the roots, I want to jump into that 20-year-old young man that took on the responsibility, that stepped up and said, you know what, I'm going to be a businessman, a business owner, but that first relationship was the gentleman that owned this building. 20 years old, you sat down and you signed the lease. Right, at 20, my first piece of property. I ever Your did. first piece of property at 20 years old. And I definitely want to talk about the roots, but I want to jump into that 20 year old young man now. Was that, was that scary for you? Was that like, like, because you, you know, you gotta, I mean, you, you believed in your hand, right? Mm -hmm. Cutting hair, but you still had to make sure you lived to what you had to do to pay for this building and, and pay the bills. Right. How was that? Take us that, take us there. I mean, how was that, you know, I was, you know, always willing to help individuals. Okay. Uh, Basically, let me reproduce myself or clone or copy myself. Okay. So there were other young men that were just as talented as me or more that I gave opportunities to. You know, I looked at them. This is real estate, right? Because my mentor is Jazz. You know, Jazz is, we could talk about him too. Awesome dude. Uh, I looked at individuals as real estate, distressed property, young men, you know, that, you know, um, wanted like I wanted. Right. So let me teach you the few things. I was already out the gate. I was already off the step. I always been places. Let me teach you what I know. At 20. Let, at 20. Let me mold you. Wow. To success. And which I was able to do was other young men, you know, that worked for me at the time at 20 years old. I'm like, listen, let me give you the game. You know, you're talented, you're bad, you can cut hair, 
great as a Mickey flick, you know, but let me give you some game. So, you know, I was able to train a few for maybe about six, seven, eight years. And, you know, they rode with me. I rode with them, you know. Um, even I was like the only one with a car. Like I used to go to these guys' houses and pick them up mm. and bring them to work and take them home after work. Wow. You know, building, you know, building. And that's me. Until the day I still do the same exact thing. I will pick anybody up at the edge of earth just to bring them to work, to cut hair, you know, at my barbershop. So at 20 years old, right? you are, first of all, we live in, a, in a, an environment that's aggressive. And it was rougher back then, back then right. than what it is today. Right. It was, I mean, a 20-year-old young man right. taking on the responsibility of leadership at a time where it was even more aggressive. It was very, very aggressive. Yeah. And for you to say, I am the leader and I'm gonna teach my peers how to do what I'm doing at a young age like that, man, I commend you, man. I yeah. like like that's that's amazing. So we need, you know, more individuals such as myself. Like these days, like be a leader, you know, be someone stand for something, you know what I mean? Um, reach for the stars. Get people to believe in you. You know what I mean? Real estate. Real estate is important. You know, this is this podcast is called Self Inventory. Correct. Why not transfer it into this is real estate. Right. In your mind. Right. You know, like because you physically own your intellect in your your mind. So that's intellectual, intellectual, blah, 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 blah. Can't get the word out. Intellectual property. Can't right. even get the word out tongue twisted. But y'all know what I'm saying. Right, right, right. Intellect, in, in electrical. Pop property, you know, right. in your brain. That's funny. Hey, I listen, didn't get man, out. We all get tongue twisted sometimes. But you know what I mean? Um, but you own that. You know what I mean? So you can also lease that. So right. that's what I did at a young age. I leased that to other young men that bought into it. They rented it. And, you know, they hit the lottery. You know, they went on, you know, to be successful businessmen. You know, they have their own shops and stuff like that. I will hope they're doing well. You know, and, and not to cut your wisdom on that, right? But see, I tell people, you're not a boss until you're able to put people in position. Oh, absolutely. To become their own boss. Absolutely. That's the key. You know, I don't want to keep nobody forever. Like, I really, really don't. You right. Know what I mean? But at the same time, don't be negative. Don't have no ill will towards myself. You know, don't mess the relationship up. Don't do it. You know what I mean? Because it's like, you're going to always need somebody. You're going to always need me. So it's like, just for a conversation. You may not need me for money in because you're making money. Right. Because I, I taught you. But conversation is important these days and times. So, speaking of conversation, now... You're in South Philly. You're cutting hair. It's a lot of people from South Philly. A lot of famous people from South Philly. You spoke on the roots. Yeah, that's they. They my guys. They were always. When, when I first seen you, I'm like, yo, why he give me black thought vibes? Oh yeah, you know I, mean, I, mean? I mean, you know, he's a good brother. You know, mm -hmm. I've, I've been around him um, since 1997. Okay, uh, all the way up into the Jimmy Fallon show, which was last year. Uh, 2020, you know, I kind of, you know, was ready to, you know, fly on my, fly on my, my own wings, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, thank, thank you to him. Thank you to the roots, you know, um, NBC, Jimmy Fallon show. Uh, thanks for all the, you know, wonderful connections and relationships there, you know, um, wait, 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 hold up. So you're saying you cut the you cut black thoughts hair. You cut some of your yeah, people I cut from the black thoughts. Everybody, over, everybody over, from the roots, or some people from the roots. Yeah, some people from the roots. I cut them. Um, some other entertainers. Right. You know I, mean, what I mean, because you can see him all over. I mean, if you come you know to I mean? his barbershop on Twenty First and Snyder, Twentieth and Snyder, Twentieth and Snyder. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Twentieth and Snyder. You're going to see a lot of celebrities that you know people that he was cutting. But you said Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, the Jimmy Fallon show. The Jimmy Fallon the tonight show. show. The, the tonight, tonight show. show. It was yeah, late. It was, it was late night. Right. But then he got the big show. Right. After, uh, was it Conan? Conan, Conan, Conan one of the, I think it's Conan. Right. Conan. You know, yeah, he, he stepped, yeah, Conan yeah. O'Brien stepped away and then they awarded Jimmy Fallon the Tonight Show, the biggest show, you know, talking Johnny Carson. Yes. Bob, you know what I mean? Um, and was, you were up there cutting I people. was up there cutting hair, you know, for 10 years. 
and I That's met a major so many people. Um, I made a lot of relationships. Um, it was real good. It was very good. The roots were very good to me. Um, so you know, I learned, and you know, like I said, I'm getting older. You know, I have children, I have mm-hmm. families, mm-hmm. family, and you know, I had to take care of my family. Absolutely. So you know, I use what I learned, you know, from that platform and and barbering, mm-hmm. and you know, I made it one. I took the clay and I molded it. So, you know, I made it one. Yo, that's, listen. To be, you know, just successful. You know what I mean? You know, Philadelphia Definitely. is known for barbers. I'm oh, talking a- oh, about. Oh, absolutely. Sharp, razor. You had, remember, I'm quite sure you do. What? Back in the day where they used to have the the, sh- the hair shows. Oh, yeah, definitely in Philadelphia, yes. Um, the, the hair shows were definitely popular in Philadelphia. Um, I mean, we could even go all the way back. I, I wasn't, I was born in 78, but even before then, you can go back to Teddy Pendergrass. Okay. Uh, Teddy Pendergrass, he was you know, he was fire. You know, all the women loved him. You know, they threw their panties on on the stage for him. I man. heard about um, that. Me too. Same. So, you know, he was well-groomed. Right. And his beard was always well-groomed. His right. hair was always well-groomed. So, you know, uh, Philadelphia has always been the leader, you know, of the male universe when it comes to grooming. So, you know, those are the things that I always knew. And I was just taking mental notes, even as a young man and, you know, being in incarcerated youth study center and, you know, uh, practicing barbering, you know, uh, learning from my mentor Jazz and um, shout out to Jazz. Oh, definitely, man. You know, um, I'm just, I'm just a, I'm just a chip off the old block from his block. Um, he was the barber in the '80s down here in South Philadelphia. He cut all the ball players. Excuse me, cut all the ball players. You know, he cut all the, um, you know, all the professionals that were in the streets. You know, uh, at the height of their games. You know, he mm-hmm. was the barber, mm-hmm. and you know, he's coined. You know, his brother was Caesar. He was a uh, a dancer uh, back in, you know, 70s and 80s. And, you know, he would travel to New York City and stuff mm. like that. And um, that's where the box haircut mm. jazz was like, you know, you know, from what I, from what, I, what I know, he was the creator of the box haircut. Oh. You know, you know, cutting it four sides, nice mm-hmm. and even mm-hmm. top, tapered on the sides, you know, nice shape up, stuff like that, you know. Jazz was the guy, man. You know, he, he was in high school. He was cutting, you know, the ball players mm-hmm. in high school. Mm-hmm. He played ball himself, and um, he's just a wonderful person. Um, and um, he was ahead of his his game in his lifetime, man. Just ahead, man. You know, he, of course, he you know he took a little fall, living with drugs and drug abuse and stuff like that. You know, living in abandoned cars, and but he just he freaked it to the three hundred and ninety degree. Turn around, man. Oh, he's he's doing better now. He's doing phenomenal. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's he's history. He's etched in stone here in Philadelphia. Yeah, South Philly prefer. Shout out to Jazz, man, because being a recovering addict myself, having three years clean, I know the power of rebuilding. Oh, he rebuilt it. And, and jumping man, back, man, he, and he, being he, even stronger and better. He rebuilt it. He rebranded. Mm-hmm. I mean, he helped myself as much as my, as well as other barbers and stuff like that. Even getting into the real estate business, which he, you know, did very well in. And um, you know, I always watched him, and um, he was my hero. You know what I mean, my hero. You, know he, was, you know, he was always tall, which you know, it's over six foot. And mm-hmm. you know, I used to always just look up to him, like really look up to him. And you know, I um, patterned myself behind him. You know what I mean? Use his life, use his struggles. You know, just like I said, chip off the old block. You know what I mean? And um, I was able to learn a lot. You know, it's a blessing to know that, you know, like a lot of people don't, a lot of people don't, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? A lot of people don't pay homage. They may pay homage, but I don't hear a lot of barbers paying homage to... Me, me neither. I don't know you why. Don't, okay, okay. I don't, know, I don't know why. I really don't. I get a few. Matter of fact, it's strange. Uh, people support me outside of my own community, outside of Philadelphia for barbering more than my own people. I don't know why it's like that. And it's like, I love everybody. I respect everybody. You know, I don't have a, a ill will or a bad bone about nobody or nothing. You know, any barbers or anything like that. I don't know why it's like that. Not at all. Philadelphia in today's world, I think people respect Philadelphia barbers all over. I lived in New York for 10 years, man. And I remember one thing about Philadelphia, we always had beards. 
whether you yeah. whether it was religious reasons or you know Philadelphia was known for that beard city. Like I said, you know, taking it back to Teddy Pendergrass, he always had his beard. Always right. Always had a beard. Always right. just fly, man. He can dress. Can, uh, he can sing, and he just cultivated everything in the seventies, right. from dress to fashion, right, to way he talk. Right. The way he act, Teddy was the man, you know. Man. Prior prior to his accident, his car accident he had in, in the eighties, you know what I mean? He was fly, he's a fly dude. And he's from West Philly, right? Right, he was from West Philly, man. <laughs> <laughs> he was from, you know, big West Side, man. Yeah. West side of Philly. Shout out to Yeah, my man, so Reece. you know, um Philadelphia has always been prestigious for male grooming and you know, uh barbering in the eighties, uh barbering in the nineties. I feel like I'm a descendant of it. You know, I watched all the barbers in Philadelphia from every part of Philly that was bad. Nice. Is it some we'll barbers? Hair, is it some barbers like, you know what? I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it out there, man. Name your top five barbers, man. My top five barbers of all time in Philadelphia. Of all time, I, I want to say right now, but if you want to, maybe go. Easier, we go all time. I gotta go with my mentor. Go all time. I yeah. gotta go with my mentor, Jazz. Okay. Um, and Jazz was from South Philly. Jazz from South Philly. All right, cool. Uh, that's my number one guy. Okay, that's you know cool. I, mean? I can respect that. Shout um, out to Jazz again. Uh, you gotta go with Mark Lightfoot. Okay. Philadelphia Hair Company. Okay. Where's he? Uh, where's he? You know where he's from? 5800 block of Germantown Avenue. Okay. Um, all right. All right. Shout like out he was to like the first that I know of celebrity barber. Okay. In, okay. In, in, okay. In Philadelphia. You know, I heard he, you know, he used to cut Bob Johnson. He was on BET. You uh-huh. know what I mean? He used to cut him on his private jet. Oh, wow. So, you know, uh, definitely him, Mark Life, Life of P. Harmon said him. Um, you got Wild Styles, you know, Nori and Najee. Mm-hmm. They were dominant, you know, with the designs and stuff like that. Pretty good. You know, uh, Mr. Kenny Duncan. Uh, he's definitely. Shout out to my guy, Kenny. Kenny's definitely a dope, dope dude. Um, Big Overbrook, man. Overbrook side. West, West Philly guy. West you know Philly what I mean? Guy. That's, that's, that's my man. Um, then his other brother, uh, I have two. Um, boy named June. That okay. was really good in the 90s. Came down from West Philly. Came to South Philly. Tore it up. Okay. Uh, and a brother named L.A that I learned from critiquing and stuff like that for like barbering. Um, uh, he was from the West Coast, Los Angeles, but he moved to South Philly okay. and he did his thing. So, um, so here those, we have those, those guys, you know, definitely uh, phenomenal uh, as far as barbering. You and, heard it from, you and, heard it from and, the and, horse's and, mouth. And, and, and not me. In Philadelphia, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Not, and I not argue with anybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Anybody, I argue with anybody. Those names that I just named, definitely, you know what I mean? Uh, what makes Fahim Alexander, Fahim the Barber, Father Barber one, you know, those guys. There's a couple more that's out there, uh, especially like my North Side Barbers, uh-huh. um, Scooby Doo's, mm-hmm. uh, Jay Fresh. Uh, the honorable mentions. You know, them guys were great. You know, my North Philly Barbers, you know, super, 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 super dope. You know, I love them too. So let's jump into it. You got, you, you've you worked with, so you work with The Roots, you work with um, Jimmy everybody T- on Tonight Jimmy show. Fallon, Tonight Show, which is was the biggest show. In television. And on television. What other people did you work with? I know I seen I know when you Google your name, the um Gillette? Yes, I have a um a sponsorship. I have an endorsement deal with Gillette Razors. Wow. Um Wow. I mean I mean for years, you know, Gillette has always been associated in a part with the barber world. Like I said, wishful thinking is real, you know what I mean? Um I said I always wanted to work for them. I uh, had an opportunity to meet them. They reps, you know, out in Los Angeles, California at a barber event. Uh, definitely invest in yourself as a barber. Mm-hmm. Travel outside your barber chair if you want to be successful. You know what I mean? So these are things that I learned from the roots. Getting outside of Philadelphia, moving out outside your comfort zone. And, you know, <clears throat> I was able to meet the reps from Gillette and pitch them an idea, you know, of a barber team for Gillette. And we have a barber team called the... Uh, the Barber Council, you know, at Gillette Razors in um, Boston, Massachusetts. Mm, individuals, they're very, very good people up there. You know what I mean? We, we talking a Fortune 500 company. When I got finished my interview, when I got finished talking to them, you know, at their headquarters in Boston, Massachusetts, they said, we never met nobody like you. And I was like, like me, like what you mean? You know, you know African-American that can speak really well with sense and you know um i said you got the right person to represent your company because when you think of gillette you know you think of the caucasian male but african americans use razors too so you know it was always a stigma you know in the african-american community don't you know use you know razors on your head 
But, you know, they had this one product called the Skin Guard. You know, it was a razor. And, you know, I used it on myself. And, like, I truly loved it. Uh, my body was smooth. And it's like, you know, I started promoting the product. So you definitely can Google it. And, you know, um, you know, I'll pop up with a lot of content, you know, working with this product. You know, put some respect on this brother's name, man. Like, I really want people to understand that. And I tell people, right, people have this thing about a person being humble. This man is definitely humble. But do we ask Kobe to be humble when it's time for him to talk on the podium? Do we ask no. any of the greats to be humble when it's time for them to talk about their craft? We don't. Right. And this is why I honor this man because... We're talking about a man coming from Philadelphia, aggressive neighborhood, raised by his mother. Yes. My grandparents, my grandmother. Grandparents. Grandfather. Grandfather. Definitely. And he chased his dream. He believed in his dream. Now, sure. you're looking good. Hey, man. You know what I mean? What, hey, man. What's the shirt, you, what's the you, shirt you, you, man? He was telling me I was going to be on your show. You well, know what I'm saying? Cut it out. <laughs> so this is, my, this is my guy, Big Snoop. The revenge. Shout out to Big Snoop. That's my man. You know we uh, you know go back, you know the '90s. You know that's my, my that was my getting trouble partner. You know right, I mean? right, right, right. You know um, Snoop is I, I, yeah, Snoop is my guy. Yeah, so uh, that's my my dude. Um, you know he changed his life around. You know he has his own clothing line. Okay. And it's popping. You know what I mean? Yeah, I you need know, I need know, one of those. Definitely. Uh, you know, check him out, man. That bed is looking nice, brother. Oh, you know. I'm, I'm I'm the bad king. <laughs> I see, I see, man, I see. So now we at the end of the show, where I tell everybody this show is called self inventory, right? My letter topic My and letter self inventory for me. I had to get myself together. I had to figure out who I am as a person, right. the things that I like about myself the things that I don't like about myself, the things that can make me better working with other people. And it took me a while. Hey, man, you got yeah, but it. But we're still... You, you, you still work. We're still working. I mean, you still... You still... You got it. Right. I mean, um, you're a very successful young man. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. In Philadelphia. You know, I call you the C.B. Kimmins. Yeah. Of Philadelphia. The, the community activist. Right, you know, right, he's just, he right. just, he just missing his hard hat with, hard all, hat, the tall with, all, the, with all the stickers on it. <laughs> the tall hat. He has a hard hat. He used to come to our school back in the, in the 80s. Right. He had the hard hat with all the stickers on it. He was a community activist. So, what you know, school did you went to? What, I, what high school? Uh, I went to Bartram. Bartram of Southwest. Southwest Philadelphia. Yeah. 67 and Inwood. You know, um, How was, was that for you from South Philly to Southwest? I mean, Southwest? it was I mean, different. It was day, different. But... It is. But, you know, I had got some trouble. I was going to high right. school down here. Got into some trouble. Um, my mom moved me out of there. You know, I went over. I had family over in Southwest Philadelphia. So, it was one time you could use your family address right. to go to another school. So, you know, I finished my last three years at Bartram, 10th, 11th, and 12th. Okay. And that was a great time. You know, I right. uh, got a chance to meet so many people outside of South Philadelphia. Right, right. Well, that's good, good, good yeah. people in Southwest and West Philadelphia. They were really good people. And we're still good friends to the, till today. You know, I cut their kids here. You know what I mean? My friends from high school, nope. I, cut, I cut their kids. So, you know what I mean? Um, it was it was just a, it was a dope look, you know what I mean? No disrespect to South Philly. But go ahead. Right, no disrespect to South Philly. I'm a West <laughs> Philly guy. All right, school. You know what I mean? I never... The only time I came to South Philly was to go to South Street. Oh, yeah. Well, I we, know, we, it, but I, it's like South Philly had its own entity. It was like, like its own city. It's like every part of South Philly, excuse me, of Philadelphia has its own part. True. Y'all got 69th Street. True. So we had to get on the L to go to 69th Street. Right. You know, either to, either to go to the movies or go shopping. Right. You know, what was up there? Sears was up there. Yeah, Sears at um, the time, yeah. You know, uh... Freaking 69th Street was always popping. You popping, know what I mean? Right, 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 right. You know, we had South Street South down Street, here. Right, so, you facts. know what I mean? All the little boutiques and the side shops and stuff like that. You know, what was it? Dr. Denim. Right. You know, back in the day. So, you know. Um, Dr. Denim was one of those popular stores, too. Yeah, so, Shout you know, we, we had that. And, you know, we shared downtown Philadelphia with yeah. everybody. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> Chestnut Street ain't hit uh, North Philly. So, right. you know, we shared downtown right, with everybody right, you know right, what I mean? right, right. you know the movies chestnut street the movie theater so right, you know what right, I mean? right right i mean you know easter and stuff like that you yeah. know what i mean everybody hung out everybody hung out downtown so you know that was always uh cool too you know right, what i mean right. uh, growing up in philadelphia you know the gallery and all of that 
uh, the real Gallery Mall, you know, the one that uh, Will Smith rapped about. You know right, I mean? right, 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 the, right. The real gallery now was called what? The, uh, um, Fashion District, which is really nice. It's really dope in there. But they should have kept the gallery name. Yeah, the gallery probably because the Fashion District for me it was like okay, New York, New York ish. Yeah, that's when. I, but but it's not. It don't give me New Yorkish stores. No, it don't. Mm-mm. Like it just it, like it, it's a dope name, Fashion District. Yeah, but it. they should have kept that the gallery. The gallery probably. I mean, yeah, it's history. It's history in Philadelphia, and um, it's super dope down there. So, what is your self inventory like? You tell the people what is your self inventory. What are you working on every day to be to make yourself better? Because like phones, they re, they upgrade. Everybody's upgrading every day. Technology is upgrading. Um, we have to upgrade ourselves. I mean, I'm just you know my intellect upgrading that. Okay, that's you know I mean. far as um, just want to be successful, wanting to learn more uh, relationships, mm-hmm. like you know uh, building with. Fortune 500 companies, mm. which I have the opportunity to do so. Mm-hmm. You know, brands, big brands that, you know, um, they actually sending me emails and talking to me, you know, asking me, you know, input, stuff that I always wanted to do. Mm-hmm. And I have that respect, you know, um, in my inventory. Well, since we know Father Barber's inventory, his self inventory, next up, I saved my hair, man. Oh, you need a cut. I saved my hair just for this segment to get a cut, man. We want to see how sharp you are, man. We want the viewers to see how sharp you are, man. So, you think you can do some of this, man? Oh, yeah. We're going to get that. We're going to get we, this we're down? Gonna, we're going to get that down. I'm going to give you waves. Oh, you're going to give you waves? <laughs> uh, all right. Well, you know what, man? Hold up. Time out. I got to... This 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 one one gentleman real quick. Real quick. He's a, he's in the audience, man. Uh, he definitely can get his two two cents of fame. This is my uh, yeah. this is my uh, my stylist, uh-huh. my slash customer, one of the best comedians in, you know, Philadelphia. in Philadelphia, man. Right. Uh, definitely gotta bring this guy out real quick, man. You know, this this is my guy right here, Mr. Uh, Mr. Khalif. Mr. Khalif Little, Yo, he, he old now. He got a milk. He got milk. Dad. Dad. It's great. <laughs> now, this is my guy from back in the day. That's <laughs> you know what I'm cool. saying? Know what I mean? Dick, right, I just need to make this real quick. Uh-huh. Like you just said, you said you're gonna get a cut. Yeah. You gotta wait, cuz, because I've been waiting this whole interview to get my cut. <laughs> you know, I, you know how long I was here. I, I don't have nothing to do with that. I was here since like eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Come on, bro. But no, like it's good. Like I, I'm, I'm proud of both of y'all. You know what I'm saying, like I look up to both of y'all. Like you on a positive side of things. You know what I'm saying, you just got our city like rocking like you you, you, you you got this, you got the city popping on a different level and the fact that i know you right we know each other from back in the you, day i know you uh i know what you're saying and what you're doing is from the heart it's like right. it ain't no fraud like it ain't no capping you don't you don't do it for the likes the followers or we had that before instagram i mean before you just instagram, yeah. you know what i'm saying you was already him you was right. already established right. the same thing about Fahim. like one of the best things we say about him is like he's humble Humble. Like we be everywhere, right. LA, right. Vegas. He takes me everywhere with him. We do a whole bunch of stuff together, and no right. matter where we go at, bro, he's just like he got chill boy in the audience. Like, <laughs> no, he could be a millionaire, cool. and you wouldn't even know. That's the good thing about. We it. go to the club, he sleep. Definitely, <laughs> with glasses bro. on. Like, no cap. We, we 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 took an adventure in a strip club one day. We went to uh, Magic it was City. in Magic City, man. <laughs> <In> Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta. Magic City. It, it, it was sleep. I was sleeping in the club, bro. When we walk in, we Magic got him on slides because you know they love Philly. Right. He come in with the bear. They think he Rick Ross. Uh, <laughs> Yo, we was getting that treat. We in VIP. They was we get. Went. They had it on. Bro, he was chilling in the corner. But we thinking five just chilling because five don't drink. Right. He ain't really mm-hmm. paying the girls no mind. Right. Five just they just chilling. So right. he in the corner like this, bro, chilling, leaning against the jump, but he had the shotty zone. Right. The shotty zone. So we piloted that. Keep looking, I'm like, bro, he ain't moving now. This is like a situation. Right, right. So it's like we slide up. I'm going to the glass of my man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, that's a that's something I probably would have been doing too, man. It was it was lie. it was past my bedtime, man. These guys <laughs> right. got me at one 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 thirty in the morning. I'm like, man. But no, like it's just it's it's dope as his friend, as his brother, as his client, you know, uh, to watch him still grow, right? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I always tell for him, I'm like, yo, bro, you somebody. Like he's yeah. like, I ain't, I ain't nobody. You know, you somebody. Like your barbershop is like the sanctuary. Like right. everything that going on in South Philly, you don't never hear nothing going on in Fahim shop. 
Right, how about that? You don't, you don't never hear no gunshot. You don't hear about no fight going on fight. Ain't shot. How about that? People don't disrespect you or disrespect you. They respect what you do. Like, you could have, with your talent and everything he got on his roster, mm -hmm. which is long. Right, right, right. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You could have went and did anywhere. You could have went and cut anywhere. You could have relocated. You could have moved. You could have bought a shop anywhere. You said, no. I'm, I'm starting right I'm staying right where I'm from. I'm I told you. right where I'm from. Like I told you in the beginning of the episode, you know, just like how the Italians did it. The, high, the Italians stayed and remained in the community for over a hundred years. So that's how I feel. I want that mentality. Stay bro, right here. You did it smart though. Like, bro, you gotta understand. Like, that what used to be the nail salon over there. Right. All he had was this little spot right here. This poor market this. He said, all right, you're right. All right. They left. All right. He said, leave my body, John. I'm like, bro, you ain't gonna get that. What do you do? You got it. One day I come in, there's a hole in the wall. I said, what are you doing? He said, I told you, I got that joint. Like, I'm, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I said, all right. He said, well, watch what I do next. I said, what you want to do next? He said, I'm going to buy the whole building. Yeah, I remember I said, you ain't going to buy the whole building. I, 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 I remember right. you mentioned Go, that. Uh, check the D's. Google. Now I come. And I check the D's. The boy got the blueprint, but he always put Google. me in the mix. No, in the summertime, we, we going to do the roof at a party. We're going to put a stage up there. <laughs> I'm just like, where do your mind ever stop? So when you ask him a question, like, yeah, how do we stay relevant? And hot with everything that's going on and all that. It's real simple, though. He just being him. Well, with that being said, I'm going to tell you this. Where can they follow you at? Oh, man. Everybody can follow me on Instagram at Exotic. Oh, this guy is funny, man. He could. He could. O T I C W 2. Okay. And with that being said, we're about to show y'all the skills of Father Barber and how he gets down, man. He said he's gonna bring the waves back, so <laughs> Yo, let's bring the waves back. Get, man. You still in my chair. Come on, you still in my mind, bro. That's what he said. He said that everybody gonna cut your hair when you be going like that. He's like, see, I gave you the waves. Yeah, I got my waves. We're gonna see if we can bring these waves back in order, man. And let's get in tune, man. Let's get into it, man. B McFly. Top motivator in the world and your sober oh, messenger. Where they can find you at on Instagram. How oh yeah, well, oh yeah, B McFly, B dot M C F L Y underscore Google. Brandon Chastain, Google. And you, and you can find me at uh Father Barber One. That's F A H D A Barber number one. But you could Google me, Fahim Alexander. You wanna know more about me. Let's go.